Hey y'all, uh, today we're going to be talking about a subject that's kind of near and dear to everybody's heart, and that is their everyday knife. Now, it's hard to say that your everyday knife is your favorite knife. Maybe it is, but I'm going to tell you, uh, my everyday carry knife has to be a knife that I like, that I depend on, that I know is going to work for me time and time and time again. Uh, it has to be rugged. It has to have just... It has to fit the nomenclature of a tool, but that doesn't always make it my favorite knife. I really do have some favorite knives. I've got some older knives that are sentimental to me. I've got some, some um, knives that were really expensive that people gave to me and just different things. And those are kind of my favorite knives, but I leave those put up. Everyday carry, this is the workhorse. Um, so this is what we're going to be talking about today is everyday carry knives. Kind of some of the criteria. This is one that we really like. This is the Kershaw Curo. Um, it is an assisted opening knife. I really like this little thing. We've actually tested this for about 14 months and we're going to give you some of the results of it. We're going to tear it down. We're going to look at just what everyday carry does to a knife and why you wouldn't want your favorite knife to be your everyday carry knife. So hopefully we'll have a lot of information in this video. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, we'll get right back to it. Thanks. Redneck Gunworks! Uh, as promised, we're going to uh, take a look at the Kershaw Kiro. Um, this has been the knife uh, that we've, uh, well, that I've personally carried for a little over 14 months. And uh, we just want to give you a brief overview of it. We're going to do a comparison and some other stuff. So real quick, we just want to, uh, well, this is the comparison, and um, I'm going to open it up. This is the control, I guess is what you would call it. And so this is the new one coming out of the box. Um, brand new Kershaw Kiro up next to the 14-month-old Kershaw Kiro. Uh, of course, uh, if you're curious what comes in the box, um, it comes with uh, an instruction sheet. It's going to help you identify the parts of your knife, um, shows you um, how to open it with the flipper, um, let's see what else they've got here, closing it with the liner lock, it kind of explains the liner lock a little bit. Um, on the other side, lets you know about the uh, pocket clip, care and maintenance, uh, sharpening, a little bit of information about the uh, warranty and the liability disclaimer. So uh, pretty good little pamphlet that comes with that. But um, this is the new Kershaw Kiro straight out of the box. And here is the 14 month old one next to it. A uh, little bit of difference, a little bit of wear. I uh, hope you guys can see that. Um, just a, a lot of scratches. Uh, the finish is definitely uh, more grayed out instead of black. A lot of paint gone from it, um, you know, especially in the clip area. Obviously, obviously the blade. <clears throat> yeah, looks like the, the blade. This blade just looks more of like at an angle here. You can see where sharpening it has kind of rounded out that little hump there. Um, you know, this is a Tanto, well, an Americanized Tanto type uh, blade. But you can definitely tell on the new one um, that it's a Tanto a little better than the one that we've kind of sharpened up. So that does kind of wear down. <clears throat> also, the, uh, the serrated edge, we've kind of beat ours up a little bit, but not terribly. Um, you know, this is a, a, a two-step serration, so normally I tear the teeth off of those little guys, but this one's actually held up pretty good, uh, so I hope that y'all can see that really well. Uh, overall, I think the knife held up really well. Other than just some finish issues, um, it's pretty, well, it's a little loose compared to the other. Um, here, I'm going to hold the handle real tight and wiggle the blade, um, and I'll hold this one real tight, wiggle the blade, a little more movement, I guess. I can, of course, it's, it's got an adjustable um, screw there that goes through it. I think I could probably uh, tighten that up. So, um, overall, 
I think it held up really well. Uh, I'm impressed with it. It's held its edge really good. Uh, everything seems to work really well with it. Yeah, we knocked the finish off of it, but it's an everyday carry knife. You know, this isn't a knife that I have some sentimental uh, value to. Uh, we opened boxes with it. I actually used it to open a, uh, a water meter cover with, just kind of stuck it down in there and pulled up on it like a screwdriver. Um, I pried with this, cut with it. Um, you know, I've used the handle to bang on stuff and you can tell I've kind of nicked it up compared to the new one. Um, overall though, I think it's, uh, I think it's held up well. Um, let's check the mechanism on it. Let's see, this is the new one. Kind of quiet and reserved. Yeah, this one's a little bit, uh, a little bit louder. Um, but I will say it still has an impressive click to it. I mean, it really clicks in place. Um, this one, a little bit quieter, but equally clicks in place. Uh, I think if I were to tighten this one up, it would probably, uh, I think it would go back similar to the way it was. So 14 months of regular everyday use. I think it's done well. Uh, we didn't do a torture test on this knife. That's not what this was about. This was not a torture test. This wasn't to see how bad we could beat this knife up, but this was literally after a year, and we actually went two months over the year, but after a year, uh, what would this knife look like compared to the control, the new one? Man, not bad at all. I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely impressed with it. I would tell you, um, go out, take a look at this, uh, especially because I paid $22 out the door um, for each one of these knives. Um, $22 out the door, each one of these knives. Uh, I bought uh, both of them at a, uh, I'm sorry, I, I bought one at a, uh, a big box retail store and I got another one um, online just to, just to see, you know, what kind of what the comparison was. Um, man, same knife. They obviously come from different lots uh, because the writing on the blade's a little bit different. Other than that, yeah, the stenciling on the blade is different. So they did come from different lots, and I'm not sure, you know, what production run they were. This may have been an earlier production run or later, I don't know. Um, but this one actually tells you what kind of steel that's on it. Um, it's got the model number. Um, it uh, says that it's patented, and it has the type of steel, whereas this one just has the model number and says that it's patented. On the other side, um, both of them say Kershaw Speed Safe, but just the way that Speed Safe is written is different on this blade. So um, it looks like the grinding on the blades is very similar. Um, if you look at it real close, they're very similar. This one shows it off a little more because the paint's a little worn, but if you actually hold it under the light right and look at it, it's very similar. Um, so. Hey, good knives. Um, I like them. I like them a lot. So um, we'll actually put a link uh, down below so you'll uh, be able to uh, to go and enjoy one of these yourself. So um, check that out. But definitely, um, we're impressed at just how well they do hold up. Um, they do really well. Hang on, let me see if I can get those done at the same time. Um, we'll see if they're faster. All right, let's see here. One, two, three. Mm, not bad, not bad. Uh, I don't think it's lost a step. I think it's still pretty quick. So uh, we really enjoy that. So I'm gonna put the new one up. And we're actually gonna take this one apart. So uh, the first thing we need to do is there's three um, screws here. This is a T6 or a Torx 6 size. Um, that's actually a really small size. If you buy a set of Torx wrenches, or Torx bits, you may not find that one in there. I actually had to go online, I think from Amazon, and, uh, and ordered this, so that's a T6 size. <clears throat> in most of the Torx sets, the T8 is the smallest size that I found. I don't know if that's universal or that was just my luck with it, but that's the way it works out. Okay, here we go. All right, we're gonna do some of the tech specs on this while we're uh, while we're taking it apart. 
Uh, we already talked about the two-step serration on the blade. It, like I said, it is the uh, Americanized Tanto blade with a little bit of a hump back on it. Um, it the speed safe uh, system is definitely a, a system that, that's pretty cool. Um, it is not a coil spring or anything like that. It actually uses a, uh, a torsion bar to, to move the blade forward. We really like that um, because it's really sturdy. I'm going to show you a little bit more about that. Um, okay, now on this one, we actually have to take this out, and that's a T8 size, which is usually the smallest in most of your Torx sets. Um, so we're going to open this up, and that was really loose. I didn't know if you saw that, but it was kind of loose. Um, that may be why that blade was moving around a little more, is because it was really loose. Um, but once again, I didn't do anything to this knife except sharpen it. That's it. This is the first time we've taken any screws out of it or even messed with it. Anyway, so this is the first time that this knife has been apart. So um, let's go ahead and, uh, and get it tore down here. And we're going to try to be real cautious with it because I want you to be able to see exactly what's going on inside this blade. Um, so we're going we're gonna to break it open one layer at a, one layer at a time, hopefully. That's easier said than done. Oh. All right. Okay. So the first thing we see when we pop this open, of course, there's this cavity. Uh, they got a little grease in there um, for that. This cavity actually is for this torsion bar. This torsion bar is actually what does the mechanism. Um, and I'm, this is really kind of cool. Um, this torsion bar actually right here, there's a like a little pilot hole um, or a pinhole. And the end of this torsion bar goes in that hole. The other end of the torsion bar goes into the slot um, so that the knife can be um, operated. And you see, as the knife goes down, as the blade goes down towards closed, uh, this torsion bar goes up against the end of this uh, slot. Once it hits the end of that slot, then the blade starts to apply pressure. And I'm going to have to hold that down. I'm sorry, um, but that's going to block the view just a little bit. But I've got to hold that down. And you can see where the blade starts to put pressure on that torsion bar. That torsion bar that's what acts as the, 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 the energy source for flipping this open. So that actually stores the energy in that torsion spring so that it's able to release that energy back into the blade. Um, this is a very secure way to do this. Um, it's, a, it's a very sturdy way to do it. Unlike the little coal springs um, and all of that which wear out and break, um, this actually lasts for a good long time. Hey, it's lasted us 14 months, and I guarantee you I pop this open several times a day. So the, uh, the torsion bar comes out. This is, of course, your, um, your liner piece that goes in there. That comes out. <clears throat> then you see the back or the spine piece, it comes out. This is your liner with the lock portion in it. Um, this is actually what locks the blade in, and we're going to look at that and see how worn that is. Um, I think it's kind of unique, though, on this that, uh, yep, they do. I, I knew that was going to be there. Uh, there's going to be a brass and a copper uh, washer in there, or a, a bushing, is actually, is what they're serving as. Um, but there's a brass and a copper bushing. Um, one on each side should be, if it's like the other Kershaw's. Um, sure enough, one copper and one, one brass. Um, yeah, there it is. It doesn't want to come off of there, but, yep. Um, oh, wow. No, that's a... Some sort of a spring steel, I think. Yeah, one copper, one spring steel, one copper, one brass on this side. Um, of course, this is your pivot pin. It comes out. This right here 
is the, uh, the bar that your blade uh, goes up against and secures. And then there's your liner lock mechanism. Uh, it's literally, it's called a liner lock because it's part of your liner. Um, they just cut that slot in there. It releases this portion of it. They bend it up and it becomes a lock. So pretty cool. Um, as you can see, not a lot of moving parts. Um, you know, it, it really the, the only moving parts would be the blade and then the torsion bar actually torquing, you know, I guess you'd count that as movement because it does move as it torques, um, but it's a very slight movement. So really only two moving parts in the whole thing. Um, hey, the more simple you can make a mechanism, the longer it's liable to last. And they've really done that in this knife. They've made a great uh, mechanism. They've great, made a great knife. And we're certainly, uh, we're certainly glad to have, uh, to have it in my pocket. You know, I'm glad to have it in my pocket. So, Man, thanks to Kershaw for making a great knife. Thank y'all for watching this video. If you want to uh, see this knife again, maybe in another year, let's say at the 24 month point, uh, put it in the comments. Uh, if you'd like to see just how this knife holds up, uh, say the next February comes around, we'll pop it out and uh, take it apart again and just see how long this thing will last. Because I gotta tell you, um, I'm wondering myself. I'm wondering just how much wear and tear we can put on it. Just normal, you know, uh, daily business, exactly what it's going to do to that knife. So if you'd like to see that, put it in the comments. Uh, any other ideas, uh, um, things you'd like to see us do here on the channel, put it in the comments. We love to read the comments. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Redneck Gunworks! Get off.